Hello, I'm Yondun Latu at the South China Morning Post. You know what they say karma is, right? Insert a word that rhymes with rich to sum up the lesson from the mass protests in the U.S. in the context of what happened here in Hong Kong for the better part of last year. Our city was burning as anti-government protests that started with genuine concerns about Beijing's tightening grip on the city and people's aspirations for greater democracy mutated into a movement that was taken over by mindless street violence, fascist tactics and self-defeating hate. Throughout this revolution of our times, Western governments and politicians, led by some very cynical people in Washington, and cheer-led by America's many useful idiots in Hong Kong, constantly glossed over the anarchy and opposed any attempt to restore law and order as an assault on people's freedoms. All those rallies here with people waving American flags and asking U.S. President Donald Trump to liberate, to rescue Hong Kong from the clutches of the Chinese Communist Party. And what was Trump's first response to massive protests triggered by the death of George Floyd, an unarmed black man at the hands of Minneapolis police? To brand them all as thugs in capital letters and to warn them that he would send in the military with guns blazing. When the looting starts, the shooting starts. Thank you. Those were his exact words. So when Americans take to the streets in an eruption of rage against perennial police brutality and systemic racism that has afflicted their country since its founding, they are rioters and terrorists who deserve to be shot. But when radicals in Hong Kong go on the rampage, hurling petrol bombs, destroying public property and lynching anyone who objects to their excesses in the name of democracy, they're freedom fighters. The cognitive dissonance makes my head spin. Listen now to Trump the man who claimed last year that he persuaded Chinese President Xi Jinping not to deploy the People's Liberation Army on Hong Kong streets. It hasn't happened here in 12 months of protests. While American cities brought out the National Guard and had thousands of fully armed and armored soldiers patrolling the streets within the first couple of days of social unrest, Trump can't stop talking about using overwhelming force and crushing and dominating his own people. You have to dominate, he told American governors. The only time violent protests are successful is when you're weak, and most of you are weak. In the same breath, his top diplomatic goon, Mike Pompeo, was busy chastising Hong Kong authorities for not being gentle enough on dissent here, even though this government has allowed all this nonsense to continue for 12 months now, and still counting. All those sanctimonious lectures on the need to show tolerance and restraint towards protesters in this city while U.S. police get to be even more brutal than Americans marching against police brutality. Double standards much? The unbearable hypocrisy of these self-appointed champions of global justice, speaking the language of war against their own people in the name of law and order, while they're gravely concerned about repression in Hong Kong. Give us a break. The story of Washington's concern for human rights in Hong Kong, to borrow an old line from Shakespeare, is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. The U.S. government doesn't care about human rights in the city. It's all about fixing China using its weakest link, Hong Kong, as a sad little pawn in the greater geopolitical struggle between the two powers. Police used pepper balls and flashbangs and brute force to clear peaceful demonstrators from Washington's Lafayette Park just so that Trump could walk across from the White House and pose in front of an old church for a photo op, projecting a bizarre combination of pomp, power and piety. He was holding up a Bible for the cameras, but it's a pity he will never actually open it to Matthew chapter 7, verse 5, which would tell him, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. I can't vouch for its authenticity in this age of fake news, but one image really caught my eye out of all the protest pictures from the U.S. It shows someone holding up a placard that reads, Be the America Hong Kong thinks we are. Amen.